Capitol Report is a production of Senate Media Services. This week we're at the Minnesota State Fair talking with lawmakers about all things Minnesota. The best staycation, the next Minnesota State something, and why it's important for people to talk with their lawmakers about what's going on. Stay tuned for this week's Capitol Report. Welcome to this week's program. I'm Shannon Lurkey. We're here at the Great Minnesota Get Together for our annual State Fair edition of Capitol Report. Lawmakers often give of their time to talk with constituents and the public about their concerns, and we stop by to ask them some very Minnesota questions. The Minnesota license plate says land of 10,000 lakes. What is another Minnesota attribute that could also be on the Minnesota license plate? I was thinking we need to be accurate there and have land of 15,000 lakes because that's actually what we are. And if we're going to brag, we should brag correctly. Wow. Uh... <laughs> I stumped you. You did. Um, okay, our clean lakes are... Um, what, what, uh, what are people saying? What? Give me an idea. Um, so, the land okay. of 10,000. What else do we love about Minnesota? We exactly. love we love our our northern woods. We love our we, I, I love um, where the two rivers come together in Fort Snelling State Park. These two major rivers of the Midwest. I could live with that on our license plate. Um, what else could I love on? What a great question. Um, our northern woods, our, our cities, our people, our Minnesota nice. Um, maybe it's passive aggressive, I don't know, but Minis we are the nicest people. Um, land of 10,000 lakes, I never really thought about how perfect maybe that is of a, of a model. Because um, it's truly the most important resource we have as a species is clean water because we need it to live and so let's keep our water nice and there's that reminder every day on our license plates um, clean lakes is important. Minnesota is huge in agriculture and this state fair is an amazing treasure that uh, no other state really has so agriculture about fifth in the country in production is big it's uh, important uh, to, to not only the state but across the country in in the world and uh, the state fair just a lot of fun a lot of great stuff here so uh, it should be touted. I love it. Land of 10,000 craft brewers. I, uh, I love my craft brewers and I actually have a, a booth out here at the State Fair that I'm going to go visit after I'm in here. So craft breweries has become such a culture visiting all of the craft breweries around the state and they're growing so fast and they're creating jobs. I love my craft brewers. And we're seeing a lot of vineyards being promulgated throughout and we're seeing a lot of breweries coming in these new breweries that you see buffalo's got some of them monticello's got some a lot of them so i'm seeing the vines the the vine the grape vines really coming into play and it's really a fantastic thing well we were talking earlier about boundary waters and the canoe area that area of minnesota is some of the most precious and you know pe people are very proud of their northern uh, Minnesota roots or northern Minnesota attributes so I think that would be something I would probably add to the list especially when we're talking about cons conservation and environmental issues that's an area that we should be focusing on so it would certainly give it a lot more um, play in the general public. I think land of Paul Bunyan. Uh, there's, it's very contested where Paul Bunyan is from and other states take claim to that and you know I'd like to think Paul, the home of Paul Bunyan is in my district in Bemidji, Minnesota and if we were going to do something different that might be kind of a fun nod to, to Minnesota and especially greater Minnesota to have you know the land of Paul Bunyan. First of all, tell us what district you represent and then also if a Minnesotan were planning to take a staycation, what should they see in your district? Well, my district is beautiful. I mean, we have, you know, over a thousand lakes in my district. There's phenomenal restaurants and pubs and, and things to go to and see, but we're very rich in, in outdoors there and outdoor activities. We have hundreds of miles of bike trails and snowmobile trails, so there's a lot of things we can do. There isn't specifically one thing to go see. There's a lot of things to go see, and that's why I think my district is a great area for, for tourism. But if you are going to see one thing in my district, the big statue of Paul Bunyan, the home of Paul Bunyan in Bemidji. It's kind of a fun must-see thing if you're in northern Minnesota. 
Well, Edina has been changing. It started as the village of Edina, which is part of the, the city that I represent and live in. But I also have Bloomington, which is part of the West Bloomington area. And I have Minnetonka and uh, Eden Prairie in my district. So, of course, the first thing that comes to mind is the Mall of America in Bloomington. It's just outside of my district, but part of the city that I represent. We also have the first, which is that's the largest mall in the entire country, but we also have the first indoor mall in the entire country in Edina. That's the Southdale Mall. It's all about shopping, but there's certainly destinations, and as you can see, um, in the Mall of America, it's become more than just shopping, but an experience to have family and entertainment and different attractions, so it's, there's something there for the entire family to enjoy. My district is District 9, and what people don't know is they think that I actually live in Nisswa because my address is Nisswa, but I'm technically just outside of Nisswa and don't even represent Nisswa. So everybody asks me what we should do in Nisswa, Big Axe Brewery, Rafferty's Pizza, the Chocolate Moose, all of those things. But really, I represent Camp Ripley and then all the way to the west, which is the ag communities, uh, Wadena County, Todd County, Morrison County. Uh, but the one thing I would recommend people see is, is Camp Ripley. Uh, see the museums there. There's uh, wonderful art displays there of each of the armed forces uh, with the cemetery there. It's, it's more sobering, but it's something that I think is a must-see in Minnesota. My district is Forest Lake and Stillwater all along the St. Croix Valley, and I live actually all the way down in St. Mary's Point. Um, I think, I think that, and they're two different big cities. Forest Lake is different than Stillwater, uh, but I think a staycation in downtown Stillwater, uh, and a lot of people do do that. One, there's craft breweries there, uh, but also Stillwater is the birthplace of Minnesota, so there's so much history there with all the uh, lumber barons that, that started there in Stillwater and all of the... Uh, mansions uh, that now are bed and breakfast. That, that's a great tour. Unbelievable restaurants. Uh, really nice shopping. Um, but then the history in downtown Stillwater is really amazing. And we have, we actually have like three new, uh, three new hotels too. Brand new hotels. So it's a great staycation. Actually my daughter lives like three miles from downtown. She even did a staycation last month. So come to Stillwater and to Forest Lake. They're just different. Yeah, they are different. But I've I've gone to Stillwater for like weekends too. It's a great place. So fun. Well, I think the must see in in uh, Wright County is coming to the Wright County Fair, which is in Howard Lake. It's growing each year. We see more and more people coming. More and more opportunities. We're seeing different varieties of animals showing up, uh, from the different kinds of beef cattle to the different kinds of goats to llamas to different varieties of where these kids are getting their ideas. But what I see too is that the FFA in high school, there for about 10 years, we didn't have FFA instructors at the different schools. All of a sudden, we're starting to see we're getting people from Wisconsin, Iowa, coming on as instructors for the FFA. And we're seeing the broadening expansion of new issues, new ideas, such as the horticulture, water culture, raising fish. Uh, it's, a, it's a new opportunity that goes. So I think the Howard Lake County Fair, I love the fair, I love this fair. I represent District 38, which is north east suburbs. I live in Lionel Lakes, and it, it includes Lionel Lakes, White Bear Lake, White Bear Township, parts of Blaine, Centerville, Delwood, Hugo, and uh, Lexington, and North Oaks. So we have a lot of cities in the, in the district. I have part agriculture, part suburban. But one of the things that I think is impressive or pretty amazing for the district, not only is it part ag and part suburban, but we have about 13, 12, 13 lakes and ponds in the district, including the famous White Bear Lake. Yeah, you do have some nice lakes. And the biking in your district is really good. Yeah, we're, they're finishing a, a trail around White Bear Lake. There's some citizen groups that have been working hard on that. Uh, I got my bike out finally for the first time about a week ago, which was nice. I finally took the time to do it, so hopefully I'll burn off a few pounds before uh, I have to put it away again. Eden Prairie in Minnetonka has the most impressive parklands for a suburb, I think, in, in maybe the world. Um, and But honestly, the parks and the trails of Eden Prairie, Minnetonka, both city councils and mayors have done an incredible job. And I, and I also think there's a spot in Eden Prairie that has a view of um, the, uh, of across the river, across the Minnesota River, and you can see off in the distance um, 10, 
water towers for different little cities. And a couple years ago, my wife and I went and watched the fireworks on the 4th. And it was so cool because you could see all these different, they weren't up close like booms, but you could see off in the distance all these different cities and their fireworks. And I think Eden Prairie, we're just lucky. We've got a regional airport. We've got a shopping mall. Um, I mean, it's a nice community and so is Minnetonka. It's, I love it. Minnesota has a state muffin, a state drink, a state sport, a state flower. What's another Minnesota something that should be the next Minnesota something? We need a state fossil. I got this one. <laughs> a state fossil, just come on. We should have a state fossil. And what should that fossil be? I think the trilobite, the trilobite, is that how you, the trilobite, the, I think that's what it's called, the trilobite. Um, or, Trilobite. Anyways, a uh, uh, state fossil would be great. I would leave it up to the geologist to figure out what is unique to Minnesota. Um, but I think uh, I, that'd be a nice thing for kids to, to see because right now all the state things are like living things maybe and um, in institutions, but that we've, there have been species living here for millions of years. Nice little reminder to people. I hope this isn't too unpolitic, but whiskey. We got everything else. Whiskey. There's us. Uh, we uh, can do distilling in the state now, and there's several distillers. I know there's one in northeast Minneapolis. There's one in north uh, west Minnesota. I'm sure I'm missing someone. There's uh, another one in Roseville area. They've been trying to get some licensing changes. But whiskey, why not whiskey? We have beer and everything else. Might as well have a whiskey. So the University of Minnesota makes a sweet corn ice cream. And I'm just saying that if the University of Minnesota made it, and we don't have an ice cream, maybe it's sweet corn ice cream. Have you tried it? I haven't tried it, but it's gonna be at a, a football game that I'm gonna to go to sometime this year up in uh, the University of Minnesota. I'm gonna try it, but I know the pres new president of the U said, this is awesome. So wow. I said, maybe we make a Minnesota ice cream. Well, it's very funny that you asked, Shannon, because I actually had a bill, uh, my second year in the, in the legislature, to make the state color we don't have a state color right now, and I wanted the state color to be purple. Um, and so it, it, we sort of resurrected it after Prince died, um, and I'm still, I'm still pushing for that. Some people say it's frivolous, but you know we have a lot of downtime, um, and I think the state color should be purple. We've got the Vikings, we've got Prince, um, Alzheimer's is something that I'm fighting for, so. Well, to stick with my theme, maybe we should have a state statue. Now, uh, once again, we could use Paul Bunyan, so. Well, Bunyan kind of, and Babe, the Blue and, Ox, exactly. right there, right next to the lake. Exactly. And that could be our official one right there in Bemidji. The University of Minnesota developed a grape that I have in my backyard called the Minnesota Bluebell. It's very hardy, resistant to 40 below. And so in coming back from a hard winter, hard frost, you know, uh, the, the Minnesota Bluebell grape is a, a great opportunity, just like the Honeycrisp apple when that got put in place. People are also talking about a new apple variety coming from, out of the University of Minnesota that should overtake that, but the Honeycrisp is right now the apple. So I see a, a new grape. The one thing that I'm surprised we still don't have is the state bird or the state insect. Well, we do have the bird, the loon, but the insect, which is almost a bird, um, the mosquito, uh, which was the one that came to top of mind when we were talking about this uh, particular issue of a, an insect would be, um, certainly we have plenty of them in the summer, but the mosquito seems the most relevant. <laughs> Why is it important for Minnesotans to talk to their lawmakers and be engaged with the legislative process? Well, the legislature affects every aspect of people's lives. I was just talking to someone here at the booth who is a Vietnam veteran who is talking about taxes, and taxes impacts everybody's lives in the state of Minnesota. We all pay taxes in one way, shape, or form. He was talking about taxes on income for seniors uh, and income for veterans and so forth. When you're in a fixed income and you're paying upwards of 20% of your income on, on, and if it increases, it's going to make a big dent in your budget and your family plan. And for him, he was saying he was using his credit card to, to pay for it. Uh, so we have to be very uh, vigilant and listen to these stories because there's one thing when we have committee hearings and people come and talk and advocate, but it's a different thing when we come to the state fair and talk to people where they are and talk about their experiences, not just on taxes, but in everything else that they uh, are affecting their daily lives. Well, this democracy, this republic, depends on citizen participation of the people, by the people, for the people. Uh, these might seem like old words and worn out, but they're still very important. They still carry meaning. 
and it's very important for the people to understand that without their input, without their participation, the elitists will get what they want. It goes to the people who are in the arena. If you're not in the arena, you're going to lose. Now, I may disagree with your point, perspective or point of view, and we can hash that out. But if you're not in the arena and you're sitting on the sidelines, uh, rest assured something's going to be done to you. Be part of the process. It's a lot of work. It's not exciting all the time. But you should pay attention because in Minnesota, unlike D.C., we can function and get things done. We have much more impact on the lives of the citizens of this state than D.C. can. So bring it home. Politics is local. Uh, from the city council, the county, the state legislature, we have much more impact on people's lives than they can in D.C. So pay attention to local. That's where it all starts, and that's where it's most important. And this is something that I tell my kids all the time, too, because they're all wrapped up in the Kardashians or where Taylor Swift is. Uh, but and even people that say they don't like politics, it's not about the politics, it's about the issues, and all issues are so local. So I, I just to even, even follow your senators or your representatives Facebook page to see what they're doing, what they represent, what ideas that they're trying to get past here in the state. It's really, really important because it affects you, your life, your job, your career, your taxes, your property, uh, at, right in your backyard. So you really should, I just encourage everybody to just get to know their representative. If people stay informed or uninformed and don't pay attention to who's in office and what they're doing, those laws affect how they live. I mean, whether it's uh, the fact that you have to pull over when somebody's trying to pass you or you get a ticket for using your cell phone. I mean, those are types of laws that we pass in Minnesota or we don't pass based on what the people of Minnesota think. And so, very important, uh, taxes are uh, impact Minnesotans. Uh, the 20 cent gas tax, for example, that the governor proposed, many people said, we don't want to do that. And I think that was part of the reason that we were able to say no 20 cent gas tax. So many, many issues, some things we solve for the good and some things we stop because they're not good based on what the people of Minnesota think. I think it's a very important that people get to see us out in our districts uh, because what happens there has an influence on their jobs, on their livelihoods, on their day and day activities. Your spouse, your wife, your partner, whatever back home that has a, a positive or a negative effect on how you're going to live your life. That's the only way we know what's going on and get a tone of what, what the public wants us to do in the direction they want their legislature to go. And we do get a lot of opinions from very differing viewpoints and it's important to hear them all so we can take everything in and make the best decision for our constituents and the areas we represent. Mm. I, I, as you know, Shannon, I taught American government for 33 years, and I kept telling them, you got to contact your legislators. You got issues, you got comments, you got questions, you got concerns. That's our job, and we love it when people come down there. And um, uh, um, last year, this um, senior from Eden Prairie High School comes, and she's from v she's been in the United States for four years since ninth grade from Vietnam. Halfway through our meet, uh, my thing with her, she starts crying, and I asked. What was wrong? She says, I can't believe we're living in a country where I can come meet my elected official. And that, uh, Minnesota, come on down. Come to the state capitol. We love it when you come down. We, you guys, your job is to make us better at our job. So come on down, please. Pease of the Minnesota Historical Society offers further insight on one of our capital's beautiful features in our occasional series, The People's House. Minnesota State Capitol has a lot for a visitor to take in, from the art, from the variety of stonework, from the grandeur of the spaces. But for those people that are really interested in details, there's some symbols that they could search for. Can you talk about the symbols in the Capitol? Yeah, sure. The, Cass Gilbert, who was the architect of the Capitol, and also uh, Elmer Garnsey was the chief decorator, uh, put all kinds of Minnesota symbols throughout the decoration. And a lot of these places you have to look real close because you might walk by them if you worked here for years, for instance. If you don't look at the details, sometimes you walk by all these symbols for many, many years. And so you'll see lady slippers and north stars, and there are gophers because we're the gopher state. And they're interspersed and interlaced in all the decoration throughout the state capitol. 
There's some threads that tie the outside to the inside in terms of symbols, uh, the letter M and some of the braids of agricultural products. Where are they outside and where are they inside? On the outside, you'll see on the exterior, especially around the front entrance, you'll see lion's heads. And when you see a lion's head with its mouth open, it represents authority. And then you'll see above that, you'll see eagles around the dome. And those are represent, of course, eagles from the national government. So we're part of this United States. And then in between the eagles and those columns, you'll see uh, beautiful uh, carved stones of lady slippers. And so those are ringing the dome. So once again, as you're walking up those front steps, you get this idea of the sense of prosperity and progress of the state. You have that gold horses in the front that represents the prosperity and the progress. Plus you'll see wreaths and festoons of products, agricultural products that were an important part of recognizing Minnesota's economy and its wealth from 1900. So if you were to come inside the Capitol and look for eagles, where might you find some eagles? You'll find them everywhere. You can go to the Rathskeller. There are eagles down in the Rathskeller cafeteria. You can go to the ground floor. There are some in the decorations of the pedestals. You'll see them in the first and second floor. You'll see them in just about every chamber. There's a, a representation of an eagle. Once again, establishing the importance of that federal government and the importance of being part of that United States. As you approach the front of the Capitol, there's a letter M on either side. M plays a big part in this Capitol. Yeah, M's are, of course, represent Minnesota. So as that visitor, you want to see that this is Minnesota's state capital. So you'll see letter M's not only in the front of the building, and you'll see them in the railings, in a cipher, they call it. You'll see letter M's even in the points of the star, the North Star, in the rotunda. And you'll see M's all throughout the decorations in the ceilings, the stencil work, and so forth in the house chamber. And once again, what, what Cass Gilbert and Elmer Guernsey are establishing is this is Minnesota state capital. So you always want to remind people Minnesota has uh, all these things that you can learn about or be a part or have that culture and that industry and that agriculture to understand us as a state in 1900. The Lady Slipper, which is Minnesota's state flower, can be found both outside and inside at the top of the columns. Where else can we find the Lady Slipper? If you, as you walk up those front steps, you'll see, you have to look closely because they're quite a distance above you, but in those uh, capitals, the Corinthian capitals, right dead center is the Lady Slipper. And that's also found in the third floor when you look at the top of the capitals throughout the building. Uh, you'll see these lady slippers. And they're in the railing, where there's, there's a third floor railing that you have to stand on the second floor to look up to see those lady slippers. They're in some of the stencil work and the decoration of the house. And so that's once again an important state flower from the 1900s that is still an important part of us recognizing, you know, I think we're the only state that has a pink and white showy lady slipper. So that's a, a, uni a unique decorative detail in the state capitol. Minnesota is known as the Gopher State, and it's because of a railroad scandal that happened in the 1850s. Tell us the story of how Minnesota became to be known the Gopher State. Yeah, that was one of the first big political controversies or scandals in the state's history. And in fact, that all was taking place even before we became a state. Minnesota was given uh, railroad grants from the U.S. government, and they added that grant legislation into a, as a writer to a Gopher and Blackbird eradication bill. And so it was like eradicate gophers and blackbirds and these land grants are given to the state of Minnesota to develop its natural, its, its uh, industrial resources with railroads and so forth. But when we became a state, the constitution said we could only borrow $250,000. And in order to build the railroads, the investors were saying we need more money. So they changed the constitution just a few months after it was adopted to make that loan agreement to five million dollars. And so what happened is they gave grants and money to all these uh, different railroad agencies and then there was a huge economic depression. Sucked out all the investments out of Minnesota and so for that five million, million dollars there wasn't one mile railroad built. So that was a political scandal. So there was a St. Paul druggist, a cartoonist, who drew up a cartoon showing the railroad men dressed as gophers trying to influence the people and they were pulling a car full of legislators to the end of a railroad track that went to the Slough of Despond which is a Pilgrim's Progress reference and so it's basically you know the railroads being held up by the backs of uh, legislators who were bribed so that the, the heaviness of the gold sacks are pulling them down and the railroads built on top of them so 
that cartoon was pretty popular and that's how we became known as the Gopher State. And so where can those gophers be found in this building? They're once again like stars, not as common, but you'll see them in the same railings. You'll see the uh, lady slippers and the eagles. You'll see them uh, carved in the house uh, retiring room, which is not available to the public, unfortunately, but there's a, a two little gophers sitting on their hind legs there. Those are the same things you'll see in the railings. They're also found in the gates. And those were added in the 1970s outside the chambers. And so you'll see them on their hind legs at the top of the gates. And so that's kind of a, a fun way of bringing in, you know, what Minnesota was recognized for even in 1900 was the Gopher State and the North Star State. Well, let's talk about the North Star because at the very top of the dome, uh, it's adorned with uh, zodiac symbols. Do those carry any special significance? Yeah, they're representing more of the stars, the constellations. So the idea that Gilbert was trying to create was as you're standing in the first floor of the rotunda where there's a large North Star emblazoned in, in marble but also in, in brass and glass, if you look up you'll see you know, these, these signs of the zodiac which would be the stars above. And then some people say that large chandelier could be seen as a North Star as well because that's a guiding light. And that was the idea that Henry Sibley wanted when he came up with that model for the brand new state of Minnesota in 1858 is we're the northernmost state at that time and plus a, a North Star is a light that people can follow. And so the idea is follow our lead as a new state. So there's a lot of detail to be discovered in the capital. How much of this is pointed out in a tour? Yeah, a lot of it is uh, something that is first and foremost as people walk through the spaces and the tour guides are very good at, at pointing out some of those little clever details um, depending on, on the type of group on uh, the type of stories that guide might be talking about because we don't ha really have a scripted tour each guide will have some different things and nuances they'll put into their tours to make it unique and individual but yeah you'll see uh, obviously that north stars in the rotunda you might point out the gophers in the railings and the lady slippers and you'll see all kinds of uh, the agricultural products just as you walk through the building. And so the spaces the tour groups go to pretty much hit all these, these areas where you can, as that viewer, kind of ingest all that agricultural products that you see as a visual uh, reminder throughout the building. Was it common practice when, when this capital was being designed and built to have this level of detail found throughout a building like this? Yeah, I think in this time period, what you're creating is this Italian Renaissance style building. And so you're bringing some of those uh, decorative elements and details into the building. So the arabesques, which would be on the first floor stencils, are very uh, kind of flowers and products of the state. And if you went to Italy, it might be a different type of decor there because they're, you know, promoting what they have to offer, whereas Cass Gilbert and Elmer Garnsey made the decorations here very Minnesota focused. So you're going to see corn more than you would say apples or grapes in some other you know, location in other parts of the United States or, or Europe. And so that's what makes the building really neat to look at is it's an it's a Italian Renaissance inspired building but it has to represent Minnesota's values and its history and its economy as, at the same time. again next week as we delve into more topics affecting Minnesotans. I'm Shannon Lurkey and on behalf of all of us at Senate Media Services, thanks for watching.